if you think about it, pa patients let you into a part of their lives that they often don't let anyone else into. You were raised by a father who fled Nazi Germany and a mother who grew up in New York during the Great Depression. How does your family still influence your work today? I think that uh, both of my parents really instilled in me um, and, um, a belief that um, I could do something really important. Both of them had to work very, very hard and were not very advantaged in life. They didn't have much money, um, neither had the opportunity to attend college, um, and yet you could say that both um, really pursued the American dream, especially if the American dream is to have your children be better off than you were. From the time I was 12, maybe even a little younger, I wanted to be an artist and um, took art lessons uh, with a local master um, for three dollars a lesson for three hours um, and always dreamed of being a, a painter and um, initially I was uh, just um, going to focus on that alone and go to an art school but uh, Boston University offered a, a scholarship to me to attend there and they happen to have a fantastic art school. Uh, sometime in my second year, uh, I was walking to the art school from my dorm, which was a pretty good walk and it was raining pretty hard. And uh, I uh, decided to duck into the liberal arts college building to get out of the rain. And there was this poster that um, invited people to apply to medical school um, the, the goal of the program was to take people who were on a pre-med track, accept them early so that they could then branch out and diversify, take mm. philosophy or whatever they wanted to do, no longer with the pressure of having to assemble grades and a CV and etc. Even though I really did not have interest in being a physician at that time, I just thought that if they were interested in well-rounded people, sure. then I might have something to contribute to the profession. I, I love medicine, uh, I love science, but I'm also very interested in a variety of different things, whether it's art or literature or travel or whatever it might be. So it's not just an interest in art, I would say it's an interest in, a broad interest in life mm -hmm. that I think um, helps me to communicate better with my patients. Today, you're recognized as an expert in the effects of depression and anxiety on cardiovascular diseases. Uh, what makes it that much more difficult to treat patients with emotional distress? When you are really focused on the heart problem, it can be very easy for doctors to overlook the emotional health issues. Um, patients don't come in wearing a t-shirt that says, I'm depressed. Um, it's up to you to, f to figure that out. Practicing medicine by treating everyone as if they are a member of a group is, it is really not fun. In fact, I don't even know that it needs to be done by a doctor. I think it could be done by a machine. That personal connection between a doctor and a patient yeah. that is so special. That is true. That makes it fun, I think, not only for the physician, but, but also for the patient. So that these special relationships form that I hope can't be formed between a patient and a machine. Um, I certainly have no special connection with my ATM, <laughs> um, and uh, but I hope I do with with uh, providers of medical care. One can only hope. One can only hope. Uh, Doctor Ziegelstein, thank you so much for You're your welcome. time. Thank you. Uh, that was a closer look. Great, 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 great.